Hey y'all, let's talk about what makes a great real estate agent for someone who's an investor that's flipping houses or buying rental properties. My name's April Crosley. I'm a real estate investor based out of Pennsylvania. I have investments in Pennsylvania and Tennessee. I have a wholesaling and flip company. I own small multifamily properties. I invest in syndications. I'm also a private lender. I own a mobile home park. I own shared housing. We do a whole bunch of things. And today I wanna to talk to you about the difference between a great agent and just kind of like an average or not so great agent. And this comes from a private lending experience that I had where the real estate agent that was listing the flip project for my borrower was not that fabulous, okay? I don't know what happened. Apparently they had used this agent before and she was great. It's kind of like contractors, like sometimes great things can go a little wonky and off track and you have to find another real estate agent. And that's what happened in this case. So when I did a loan on this project, which I absolutely adore my borrowers, we looked at obviously the ARV, the rehab costs, and I'm super picky about looking at ARV, super picky. So I, even if an agent sends me comps, I will do my own comps. With that said, a lot of times it's difficult for some agents who aren't used to the investing world to give you an ARV. They're looking at pictures of a house that's in not so great condition, and you're asking them to tell you what it's gonna be worth when it's all fixed up in good condition. Now, sometimes agents will come back and say to you, or good ones will say, you could get this amount if you're gonna do granite countertops, really nice light fixtures, here's some comparable properties that look like that. Or they'll say you could get a little bit lower if you kind of just do a moderate renovation. So sometimes the ARV depends on the level of renovation that you're gonna do. So what happens is when a borrower sends me comps, I take those comps, I see how far away they are from the subject property, and I look through pictures on Zillow to see what quality or what level of renovation was done on the comparable properties. So on this property, the agent that was going to list it after rehab thought it was worth like $995,000, something like that, just shy of a million. And the comps, while they were a little bit further away, this house was kind of in a remote area. It wasn't in like a cookie cutter development. So they were really like the closest comps and it's out of state. So I don't know the area super well, but I know my borrower super well. And there was a ton of fat in this deal, a ton of fat in the deal. Like the profit was very large. So we had a lot of wiggle room. So they go through the whole renovation project, put the property on the market, and the realtor is just completely non-responsive, okay? <laughs> This happened right when interest rate hikes started happening. So their rehab was ending as interest rates started going up, which we didn't really like see coming or having a huge impact on it. And unfortunately, I think it was. But at the same time, the agent, while the house was sitting and not selling, was not responsive at all. I mean, would not respond to text, would not respond to email, nothing. Now, granted, the agent does not have to respond to me as the private lender. I'm not the deed holder. I'm not the person she has the contract with. So sometimes when I need to step in as a private lender and say, we need to do X, Y, and Z to get this property sold because my job is to help the borrower. Private lenders take note because some of you, when a deal starts taking a wrong turn or going awry or a house is sitting and not selling, you freak out and you freak out on your borrower. You can't freak out. You're a team and you're working together and you're there to help them. So what was happening in this situation was the house wasn't selling and so the agent decided to stick her head in the sand and not respond to us at all. Like zero, was supposed to have open houses, like just didn't have the open houses, at one point said she was sick, then you wouldn't hear for her for days. It was extremely frustrating. We kept giving her some chances 
And then I finally got to the point where I said, listen, it's not selling. Interest rate hikes are still gonna keep happening. This is a high price point home. I need you to fire your agent. How do you fire your agent? <laughs> the easiest thing to do is to go to the brokerage that they work for and say, hey, we're not super happy with this agent. The house isn't selling. The broker can then look at like, why isn't the house selling? Is it priced inappropriately? Was the rehab really junky? Like they can send another agent out and give you brutal, honest feedback about why the house isn't selling. So in this situation, they called the broker and the broker gave them one of the top agents in the office to take over the listing agreement. So it stayed within the same brokerage. So it's not like we were out there hunting for a new real estate agent, interviewing new real estate agents. That takes a lot of time. I would much rather go to a broker and say, listen, I'm not happy with the way things are going with this agent. Can you please refer me to someone else? They gave us the top agent in their office. And that agent came back and basically said the house was priced way too high to begin with which we kind of knew because we were aggressively doing price drops, aggressively, because remember, we had a lot of fat in the deal, a lot of fat in the profit. So we were doing like $50,000, $100,000 price drops. When you have a house that's at a higher price point, you can do bigger price drops, especially when you have fat in the deal. So for flippers, when you're flipping high price point homes, outside the first time home buyer price range in a real estate market where interest rates are rising and the economy sliding in a not so great direction, you need to have a lot of fat in your profit. I'm not talking about a $30,000 rehab project and a $20,000 profit. I'm talking if it's 30,000 in rehab, you're wanting 70, 80, 90, $100,000 in profit because you're taking on more risk by flipping a high end home. So back to the real estate agent. The broker assigns us a new real estate agent who says the property was listed way too high. Here's what I think it's gonna sell at. Here's my marketing plan. I will communicate with you on this day, this day, and this day, and any other day where there's communication to me from buyers or lenders. By the way, here's a marketing flyer that talked about a two for one or the two one buy down program where you basically are marketing to buyers saying, hey, even though interest rates are six, we can buy down your interest rate, which is kind of like a form of seller assist. Like us as a seller are just paying their interest for the first whatever year to help bring their interest rate down. Ask your local real estate agent about it. They can explain it much better to you. I'm not a real estate agent, but the marketing tactic was phenomenal and this real estate agent communicated with us every step of the way every time the lender or the buyer talked to her she relayed that information to us the other thing she did is on the back end when we it was under contract almost immediately when this agent took over and on the back end when we were going to settlement there were a ton of delays underwriting for the lender kept asking for more things from the borrower and settlement was getting delayed. Our real estate agent was on top of the closing attorney and on top of the lender every single day and CCing everyone on the email, including me as the private lender, saying, hey, what's going on with settlement? I need an update. I need an updated CD, which is a closing disclosure for those of you that didn't know. I need you to tell me where we're at with things. When are we going to closing? And if they didn't respond, she emailed them again. She was so, so good at communication. And that is what you need. You need an agent that can communicate. You need an agent that is super good at doing comps and really picky and conservative. And you need an agent that knows how to market and an agent that knows how to negotiate, which this agent did. Our buyers came back to us at the last minute and wanted like, $15,000 worth of things done to the house. And I was like, this is insane. So the agent said, we're gonna do this thing and this thing to appease them. We're gonna give them a home warranty and that's what we're gonna negotiate back with and see if they'll accept that. And they did. And she saved us from having to do $15,000 worth of repairs. She was phenomenal. So you don't necessarily wanna use 
your brother or your mom or someone that is new to real estate when you are also new to real estate. You want to use an agent that has a ton of experience and can navigate the entire thing for you. Also, professional pictures drives me crazy when agents take pictures on their iPhone and don't pay for professional pictures. Your agent should be paying for professional pictures for you. I don't care if it's a hundred thousand dollar house or a million dollar house. Most houses are sold online. People are scrolling on Zillow and you want professional photos. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. The badass agent that we used, her name is Ronell Austin. She is in North Carolina and works the Wilmington, North Carolina, kind of Eastern North Carolina market. She's amazing. Look her up and connect with her. You can connect us with us more by following us on Instagram, April Crosley, or check out our website, lazygirlrei.com, or our Facebook group, Lazy Girl REI.